Belief is just another form of doubt. You can't believe in something that you already know. How does one connect to the invisible factors to do with right and wrong? You're not a place. You're not where you're at because people will be given names like Jamaican, African, based on locations. But you're not a location. In every community, as we mentioned earlier, there's intelligence at the service of that community. You know, earlier we, sp we spoke about the slave master. What you're saying, you're manifesting. You may not realize it, but you're constantly programming yourself by what you're thinking. Even though you may not hear it aloud, you're hearing it in your head. Hey guys, it's my Light Knowles. I'm an entrepreneur from South East London and I'm first and foremost an African descendant who believes in our liberation. So I try to keep my work in a positive limelight so that people can benefit from it. And today I'll be finding out some stuff about spirituality and where we come from. Cool. Yeah, nice to meet you. So I'm Saken. Um, most people should know by now, I represent Wusabat and um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really, you know, what I deal with. Wusabat is really our culture. It's a, um, also an ancient African spirituality culture. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to have a conversation with you. How can someone know that the set of information they are presented with is the truth? Yeah, see, the word the truth when you put the truth, it makes it sound like it's the only one. And for, for me, because um, we deal with actual facts, right? So I've mentioned many times we have scrolls that are written by our guide, master teacher. He's an author of over a thousand books. And there's a series of books called Actual Facts. Because a fact is something that it's a fact. No one can really dispute it. You see, but when you deal with belief, belief is something that is subjective because different people have different beliefs. And I point out that if you look at the word believe or belief that in the middle of it, you see the word lie. Mm. So you have to do research. And so when somebody is presented with facts, it's like if I said we all live on the earth so we're all earthlings mm -hmm. it's like you can't really kind of you can't dispute that can't dispute that absolutely if i say we're all breathing air we are you can't dispute you that you can't dispute it you see so we can unite on the things that are factual we actually have more things in common than than not absolutely where the problem comes in is with religion and beliefs and belief systems where someone says i believe i'm a bench mm -hmm. and you look at them and what you've been taught about what a bench is doesn't match up with what they well, say. What you're perceiving, absolutely. Yeah. So then it's like, it's questionable. Mm -hmm. So then you have to do the whole thing of, let's, let's understand or understand what it is you're saying. Let's go. Yeah, so this is where I think facts are synonymous with truth. Mm. Yeah, so once it's being proven to be a fact, it's like... There's not much room for discussion. There's not much room for differences Absolutely. and discussions and my Absolutely. opinion and I believe and, and I feel like because like emotions, emotion people, yeah, people get emotional yeah, about yeah, their yeah. belief or what yeah, yeah. They, they hold on to and you're like, uh -huh. you know, that's good for you Absolutely. and it's okay for you to have that. It's a coping system. Yeah, but you can't really impose it on other people. 100%. And people can be passionate about a, a subject or something yeah. and, and they feel like because they are, you should as well. Absolutely. It's, and if it's you kind of don't, of, um, yeah. Of feeling like we're connected. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, a, it's like a group. It's like, we belong to the, like, we all support Arsenal. No. Or we all support <laughs> Manchester United. Yeah, yeah, or we yeah. all belong to Islam. Or we all belong to Christianity. Christianity. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. like in a gang. It's a gang. And it's, then it's, we have to gangs. fight against other gangs. And it's like, <laughs> we don't do that. We, we rise yeah, above all of that. Absolutely. And say, okay. It's above the division. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. We're playing football to have fun. Uh -huh. And if we win or lose, it doesn't yeah. matter. We, we still had fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it gets to the point where you're passionate to the point where you lose and then you want to go and start smashing up cars and Turn smashing up teams. Fan. Yeah, this because, is a brilliant because, analogy. because now it's about your emotions <laughs> and your team has lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, that's kind of where if, I'm coming if, from. If I may. Um, yeah, sure. We touched upon belief. Mm. And I stumbled across the idea that 
belief is just another form of doubt. Mm. Because yes. you can't believe in something that you already know. Mm. Right? Exactly. Hence, um, you've already touched upon so many things in regards to provenance of information. Yeah. Uh, which, in terms of the black community or the African community, or however, we all identify as mm. coming from the continent of Africa. Uh, all around the globe, mm. I've, I've noticed that within our households, yeah, um, belief was a big topic mm. uh, in a sense where this transmission of information from parents to children and so mm -hmm. on and so forth, yeah, and it's kind of tough for some individuals finding that conversation mm. because they want to do well and they mean to do well, mm. but they are attached to. A set of traditions yes so how does one um start this this is who i would like this answer to be for yeah how does someone start to work towards a factual life mm. you know if we can't say the truth yeah if we say a life of a life based on facts yes i get you and like you say belief was really imposed on you if you really think about it like you say if your parents were brought up in a particular belief system then you'd kind of like automatically would take that on mm -hmm. um it was the same for me as you said in terms of christianity and mm. but what it is is even as a child i had questions mm -hmm. and if you want answers even in the matrix the movie they say that you know the the question would lead you you know what i mean it's, it's what drives you so mm. if you want the answer you you seek the answers and if you can't get it within the household of your family then you'd go out and it might be to your friends to the school to the church wherever to try and get these questions answered Answer, yeah. um i think to answer the main question that you you're saying in terms of how do you start the conversation mm. you have to use things that people can relate to mm. say for example health yeah um, if there's something wrong with you and you want to get a cure, you're not going to leave it to chance. You know, um, you will be like, okay, you see the way you apply the process of something's wrong with me. I need to find out what it is so I can find out the cure. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same way you would have to apply to other things because what it is, is anything that's important to someone, they want the facts. That's facts. Yeah. Like if you go to, I, I use this example all the time, like, you go to work, mm. you, you want to know what's the job description, what, you know, what's the pay, how much do I get, when do I get it, mm -hmm. is it paid to my account, what day, what time do I get holidays, mm -hmm. and you want to know the facts because if you don't get the facts... You can't build your life around it. Exactly. And you might say, I don't want that job because it's mm -hmm. not paying me enough. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to belief, because it's personal and it's emotional and you've been given this thing about there's some deity or God or, you know, Allah or someone that is going to punish you. Yeah. And you're going, yeah, there's the scare factor mm -hmm. where you think if I don't obey them, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to hell and I'm in big trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think the fear is the real issue because you, why should you fear someone that's supposed to be loving and caring and, means you well mm. that that doesn't it kind of contradicts it because one minute is all loving and the next minute is if you're out of line you're going to be burnt in hell forever mm. so that fear makes people think i better stay in line absolutely yeah so if you can get rid of the fear mm. then you can deal with examples like i said where you're dealing with relating it to real life situations absolutely that's a it's a brilliant answer because it's practical. Yeah. Step number one is to get rid of the fear. Yeah. And step number two is to seek for practical ways to bring answers to the questions which mm -hmm. you may have. Yeah, cool. exactly. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so from this point then, it leads me to how does one practice um, a, a way of life mm. which reflects... Um, a righteous approach mm. to how one should live their life. Yeah. Again, you see, this is where the difference, say, with where I've arrived at in terms of all sabbat. It took many years to get to that in terms of I did the whole, okay, being brought up in a Christian home, having the questions, couldn't get the answers. I thought, okay, let me go somewhere else. So, I, you know, I went through the different religions, Islam, um, Judaism, all sorts. And trying to get my answers and 
the only time I got my answers is when I came across Wusabat. And I use the term Wusabat because like everything else, if it's something that you've been given, like it's packaged and given to you, then whoever's given it to you is really the person that's controlling you. Absolutely. Whereas even the word Africa, as you mentioned, yeah, um, most people will say, yeah, we're descendants of coming from the continent of Africa, but you're not a place. You're not where you're at because people will be given names like Jamaican, African, whatever, based on locations. Mm -hmm. But that's, you're not a location. No, because, we're more than that. Right. You're, you're actually composed of your your DNA, what actually makes you up. So people will claim, you know, like jurisdictions or names just based on the fact of you're associated or identifying with that location. So even the word Africa, that, that came about and was coined by Arabs at mm -hmm. a particular point. Absolutely. Or Europeans. So, yeah, Europeans. But, so what would you have been or what would you call yourself? Was it not for their involvement? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is why... When you start going backwards and researching... You find more information. You find more information. And then things start to be clear. So when you say, well, what do I practice then in terms of righteousness? Mm -hmm. Well, right is right. Mm -hmm. Wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have anything to do with color of skin, mm -hmm. location, or whatever. It's like, like what I said before with the facts. If I throw something up... It's going to come down. Is it going to come down? That's it. Mm -hmm. So... There are no arguments. So when you start to say, what are you practicing and why are you practicing it? And where did it originate from or where did it come from? So for us, we go all the way back. Yes, we use Africa as, you know, one of the places that people identify with. Not even as being black, even though that's where scientists, anthropologists, everyone is saying life began. So that means everyone has some link to there anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So even if you're white, you still come from black anyway. Mm -hmm. So isn't everyone African in that regard? In that regard. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, like you say, in terms of what you're practicing, righteousness is based on what is right. What is right. Yeah. So um, in the journey of an individual, detaching him or herself from programming mm. and from transmission of information yeah from loved ones one should practice a healthy relationship with what is right mm. and understand that what's wrong is also wrong mm. for the facts that are at play what's yeah. right what's right what's wrong what's wrong yeah um how does one connect to the invisible factors to do with right and wrong i.e mm. uh, forces that are beyond human computation right or understanding mm. So, to simplify yeah. such a complex question, yeah, yeah, but God. who does one pray to? Right. Okay, the first question should be, why do you need to pray? That's a great question. Yeah, because what is prayer? Because someone has taught you that in order to get something, you need to pray to this being, God, Allah, or deity, to give you this thing. Yeah, which in fact is substitution. Yes. That, that, that aspects of prayer come for substitution. I can't get by myself, therefore I'm going to ask another entity or a being that can R give to me. Right. right. But That's then the condition. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. ultimately, mm -hmm. when you do get it, it's because of what you've done. Absolutely. You have to get it. You mm -hmm. see? So it's kind of like misdirected power mm. um, because I can get a plate if I'm hungry, yeah, mm. and put it down and say, I'm hungry, I'm starving, I ain't got no money, mm. I need to eat. Mm -hmm. And I pray all day long to, for food. food. Ain't it ain't coming. <laughs> Bro, the food's not going to come. The food ain't coming. <laughs> you, you have to get up and do something. Yeah. You might have to call someone, uh -huh. lend me some money. Uh -huh. Work as a porter. Do something. something to get the money to go and buy the food, uh -huh. prepare it, cook it, or, you know, to, to put it on your plate to on eat. Plate, yeah. So what it is is, People, and I always say this as well, English and the language mm. is also a barrier mm. because when you say pray, you can hear the word P-R-A-Y, mm. but you can also hear P-R-E-Y, mm. mean you're being, someone's praying on you. Absolutely. Yeah, so, 
So you're giving your energy and your power and everything to somebody or something else to give you what you need. Absolutely. But you it's, can it's, do it for yourself. It's a substitution of your power yeah. in exchange for whatever desire or outcome you wish for. Mm. Um, so to turn yourself into a prey is to submit. Yeah. So you're submitting to something greater. Hence the idea or the concept of God in this equation mm. presented by all these religions yeah. uh, as something to submit to mm. in exchange for favours. Yes. Right. So I, I'm totally on yeah. the same page as you there. Yeah. I'm trying to open consideration for those that might not have done so for themselves. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. But the reality is that if you can, if you, if you can ask God for something and you get it, the question then becomes, why doesn't he answer questions for other things? Like, why doesn't he answer the questions of, let's get rid of all the crime in the world, all mm -hmm. the poverty, all the hunger, mm -hmm. all the rapes, murders, mm -hmm. um, anything that we don't like on this planet. We don't co-sign. Yeah, we don't co-sign. Why can't we pray and say, get rid Deal of that? that? Let's go. That's you know what I mean? Because too. yeah, these are the That's types of question. questions we have to ask 100%. because because people will be like, even like um, mediums that have TV shows and they they bring people on the show mm -hmm. to say you're going to contact your grandma or someone mm -hmm. that's passed away and mm -hmm. they're going to give you messages and and I'm like, if you can do that, if you really have the power to do that, yeah, can we not have a show where we contact God? Let's go or oh, Jesus no. or do you know what I mean? Absolutely. The whole world's listening that day. And let's see if we can get him to do some stuff. Get, get those messages. But it's a, it's a game because they choose when, God, when it, God gets the praise and when he doesn't. Selective outrage. Yeah. So Selective, absolutely. Can he do it or can't he do it? <laughs> well, he will. <laughs> Which one is it? Because I'll put him to the test. No, for sure. And then people will say, like you say, going back to your question, we're... Mm. You can't ask God that. You can't say that. You can't do that. Yeah. But why not? Why not? It's especially considering that we come from the same kind. Mm. You know, most of these holy texts, yes. that's what they say. They say that we are essentially God's favorite creation. Mm. Hence, you know, when our behavior is bad and we sin and we rebel against God, it's like, how can my best creation conduct itself in such a manner? Mm. You know, um, my friend recently said something to me extremely powerful in regards to yeah. my aunties and uncles playing. Yeah. He said, when aunties, mothers and uncles, fathers yeah. pray and they ask God for a new house yeah. or they ask God for a promotion at work, are they not essentially praying to the white man? Mm -hmm. Because if you pray and you say, God, give me a, a raise on my salary, yeah. you're going to go into work and you're going to negotiate mm. with your boss for a higher salary. So your initial prayer when you got on your knees was to the white man, not yeah. to God, was it? Exactly, exactly. Um, and yeah, like you said, like, there's so many examples where, because what it is, is it's a game because you have God on one side and you have the devil on one side. Mm. And it's like every time something good happens, they will, get, they will say God did it. Mm -hmm. Every time something bad happens, they say the devil did it. Mm -hmm. But the question is, who's more powerful? Mm. It's got to be either God's more powerful or the devil's more powerful mm -hmm. or they're on equal grounds. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start to ask people, how did this devil come about? Mm -hmm. They say he was once an angel that went bad. Mm -hmm. So the question is, did God know he was going to go bad and, and he allowed him to go bad mm -hmm. and he's allowing him to continue to do the chaos, the chaos and the badness <laughs> and the wickedness on the planet. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so it's like you say with knowledge and really facts, you get to know that the, these different beings that people are calling God are not what they think they are. Mm. And like you say, um, even to, to, to say I want a promotion, I want a, you can actually create your own job. Mm -hmm. you, you're the one that works to get the house. Everything that you get that is a material thing is you because when a situation happens where like, Let's say, I've used this example before. Two people are in a car mm. and there's a car accident. One dies and one survives. Mm. The people that 
are religious will say, oh, thank God for the person that survived. Yes. But they don't see in that that who was responsible for the person that died. And if God could save both of them, why not? Why didn't he? Why didn't he? And then let's say even the one that survived was injured badly and they take that person to the hospital and the doctors and the nurses do the work of healing or mending, mending him, yeah, putting him back together. And everyone comes and they thank God for it. But not the workers that got But not the workers that did, did it. And people will say, oh, but it was... It, it was, was God, God that, that worked through them. Worked through them aye, aye, aye. <laughs> it was God that aye, worked through them. To, to speak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's long. Aye. Why doesn't he just do it? Why yeah, does he yeah, have yeah, to yeah. go through someone to go? Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? So, yeah, you're, you're asking a, a very, very interesting question. But this is the concept of you cannot pray to the same God as the slave master. Mm. Because when you go to work... You You're slaving and working for somebody else. For the slave else. master. Let's yeah. go. Now we're speaking. So, so the slave master's got more power than you. Let's go. So his God must be answering his prayers. But not yours. But not yours. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to go to your slave your master, yeah, yeah, yeah. your God, uh -huh. to ask his God to give you what you a want. Po a, po a portion of the cake or portion yeah, of the Yeah, a portion of it. A, portion, a very small portion. A tiny portion. Some would even argue crumbs. In terms of the consideration spectrum of, mm. um, for the sake of you know this conversation we're having, we yeah. call them melanated beings or yeah. African descendants. Often these are taboo questions mm. because they they make you think, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and you become afraid to to go past the threshold. Yes, of what is accepted in regards to questioning God's power, mm. presence, or involvement. Yeah. Um, it's not an act which comes from a place of malice. Mm. It's an act which comes from a place of curiosity mm. and genuine wonder, considering yeah. how much bad events have occurred for African descendants. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're in a day and age where we want to build, we want to do something positive. Yeah. Um, but we would want to make sure that the spiritual force that we can produce is targeted in the right direction. Yes, You know. of course. Um, so you mentioned that perhaps... The focus shouldn't be why do we need to pray in the first place, mm. right? So how do we as melanated beings or yeah. African descendants uh, target our spiritual energy, which we know mm. to exist, yeah. right? We know that there's something that is invisible but still exists. Mm -hmm. Just the way we know respect exists, love exists, mm -hmm. you know, all of these spiritual energies, they exist. Yeah. We can't grab them, but they are here. So how do we... I got you, um, direct I got you. this energy yeah. positively. Yeah. So when I said, why do you need to pray in the mm. first place? Was because I was saying to myself, most people that pray, they just asking for things. Mm -hmm. What we need to do in re relation to your question is, you have to recognize that the, the beings you're calling on are just entities that exist on different vibrations or different levels. Mm. And not all of them are good. Mm. Some, are, some are disagreeable, just like your ancestors. Mm -hmm. So for us in Wu Sabat, we know that we have our ancestors, that, our, that they are our family, and we can connect with them. So this is where the ancestral connection comes in. So when we're calling on energies or talking and saying we need assistance, we're actually asking our family, which, you know, in the Bible, they will refer to that as familiar spirits. Mm. Because familiar, the word familiar actually ties with the word family. Mm. You can hear it phonetically. Mm -hmm. So every family ties to their own. Mm. And this is why we did a review of one of our books called Does God Help His Own? Mm. Because that ties back to what we were saying, that if the slave master has got a God, that's mm. his family or her family, mm -hmm. and they help them. Mm -hmm. So when we start to look at the races on the planet, everyone calls on beings or people that look like them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like you need some emojis for this one, mm. right? So it, it, it's like when you look at Europeans, their God is going to look like them. So you, so you traditionally see God as you know, a white man with a beard. Uh -huh, the and blue eyes. The, Jesus is going to have yeah, the blonde absolutely. hair, the blue eyes. Famously. It looks like them. 
looks like them. Right. You go to any other culture, Chinese, Absolutely. Hindus. Got statues that are 10 foot tall. Right. Mm -hmm. Even down to the, you know, the Muslims, they will have Muhammad or an Arabian person that looks mm -hmm. like them. Mm -hmm. We are the only people as African descendants that we don't have somebody in our image and in our, our likeness. Absolutely. So, so obviously, then you start to look at, okay, the quote says in the scriptures, let us make man in our image in our and our likeness. Uh -huh. So then if we look different and they show you the images and pictures in the European or the, you know, the Western world of God being white and Jesus being his son. Mm. If, if Jesus is his son and he's white, mm. his mother's got to be white. Absolutely. So then if that's the good side, and you're the opposite to that, mm -hmm. as they claim, because we, we have these names like black and white. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, but we're, we're, none of us are black and none of us are white. Of course not. And, <laughs> and no, none of these books are, uh, or scriptures that are telling you what to do are actually authentic or proven. So the question then becomes, am I the devil then? Mm. Because the devil and everything that is negative is painted black. Absolutely. And everything that is white pure mm -hmm. is white mm -hmm. so there's a problem with that because this ties into competition and mm. it ties into racism yeah and then you start to say okay and, and even add social engineering and social engineering yes yeah because when you start to look at the so-called dictionary you know everything's like a black day mm -hmm. all the all the bad guys in the movies wear black clothes black. the black sheep of the, the black family. sheep of the family mm -hmm. you're blacklisted black black you're black men <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they, we can go on and on yeah, and on yeah, and on, right? Yeah, yeah. And and there's a when we as melanated beings mm -hmm. have a problem with that because we're like even in Islam where they will say the hadiths will say like the companion saw Muhammad and his armpits were white. Mm -hmm. They're being subtle, mm -hmm. but if your armpits are white, the rest of your body is going to be like absolutely. So there is something, and even like what's been going on in London recently, you know, with with a bit of the rights and things like that. And funnily, look, I'm wearing no one, no one wins the race in racism. Mm -hmm. Because this is where we're coming from in Wusabat. Because it's like, <laughs> it's like unification, unity, the law love. Of one. The law of one. Absolutely. It's something that makes sense, that brings people together. Mm. And then you start to see the programming. Who's pulling the strings? Who, who's doing this engineering of, two people always against each other. Mm -hmm. There's always a competition. And mm -hmm. the competition means that if one person loses, the other person that wins happy, mm -hmm. the one that loses is bad. It's bad. It's and then it takes it all the way to the, to the God and yeah. the devil, uh -huh. to, um, you know, Cain and Abel, yeah. Enki and Enlil, uh -huh. Jacob uh, and Esau. Esau. Absolutely. It, it just goes on and on and on and on to where, you know, Even, people um, are fighting. Even King David, to an extent. Yes. King David had to dethrone Saul. That's you know, right. In the most subtlest of ways. Yes. By defeating the biggest warrior, Goliath. And then, no, no, of course. Yeah. It's, I think it's, um, it's a normalized, competitive nature, uh, which brings out the worst in people. It, it kind of directly taps into our animalistic nature. Yes, uh, exactly. And, and our, our tendency to see red. Mm. And uh, the moment that's the case... Whatever's rational yeah. is not out the window. And, and they come up with terms like survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. And um, it, in the business sense, you know, it will be like capitalism, mm -hmm. which basically means that as long as I'm okay, me and my people's okay, my family. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's like there's enough food in the world to feed everyone. There's enough of everything to feed. No, no, they, we can make sure that there's no homelessness. Mm -hmm. Because when you start to look at economics, you're like, money's been designed. Mm -hmm. They can print money. Mm -hmm. Anytime they need billions, they can just print billions. Mm -hmm. So why are we all in this situation where some people are starving? Because it's a competition where someone can have a house with a mansion with 20 rooms and mm -hmm. they don't even... Live in any of them. They don't live in any of them. What, what, 12 rooms look like. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yet there's loads of people that are homeless Absolutely. and don't have nowhere to live. Yeah. You know, some people can have golf courses just mm -hmm. so they can 
hit a ball around. Absolutely. No, it's, it's ridiculous. But there's no housing. And we can go on and on and on. So we've reached a day and time where um, people are like, the people that are awoke, the people that are using their brain, the people that are asking questions, um, like you said, that fear is starting to diminish. To fade away. Yeah. Absolutely. People are like, I need answers. I need answers. Where is this God? Why isn't he taking care of, you know what I mean? Poverty and children. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we start to look at the people that are rich and famous, the ones that have all the money and everything, and this is how they attract people mm. to sell their souls mm -hmm. and to basically worship material things. Absolutely. To the point where people will kill each other over... Over materialism. Over materialism. Oh, my brother, what a great conversation for me to be in. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's <laughs> no, amazing. No, um, I have to say that the, the mask is starting to slip away. Mm. That's for sure. Yeah. We can now have those kind of conversations on a regular basis. Mm. Some people may even find themselves at work, you know, on their break, having conversations that yeah. go beyond the day-to-day -day small talk, mm. you know? Yeah, because um, it's starting to get more deep, so it's to get more spiritual and mm -hmm. people have to reckon with it. And the thing is, because of social media and like what we're doing here with always some vision, it's like people are in the comfort of their own home now. Mm. And they can, it could be a child and they can't speak to their mum and dad, but they've got their phone and they can take in the information and go, yeah. you know what, that makes sense. Mm. And then you start on your own journey where you're now seeking truth without being afraid. Like when you go to the church or to the mosque or somewhere where people are going to ridicule you or say, Absolutely. you can't ask the question. Mm. So it's opening up the world. Demonize your curiosity. Yes, in a way. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And as a child, you know, you have many questions and that suppression comes in when you're asking quick, those awkward questions, mm -hmm. you know, why this, why that? And um, that's where we are. And even adults, adults realise, you know what, I've been lied to my whole life. My whole life. And now I want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants the truth now. It's true. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the real currency. And they then tell you in the scriptures, they say the truth shall make you free. It will. Indeed. Well, they say set you free, but set. it actually says make you free because mm -hmm. you have to make yourself free. You do. No one's going to come and make you free. No. So the shackles this, have got to be removed by yourself. Yeah. So this waiting idly for someone that's going to come and save you, it's just another way of holding you back. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the, the perpetuation of uh, a stationary stage in someone's life. Mm. You know, I find that us as um, melanated beings, we often, we're very comfortable in the childlike state. Mm. You know, the, the conversation of embracing our maturity, mm. embracing our adult functions. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very few tend to really position that as the forefront of their operation. Mm. A lot of people identify as children mm. or I'm a child of God mm. or, uh, you know, Referring to their partner, oh, that's my baby. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you know that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going to my crib, right? <laughs> we, 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 add, we were perpetuating this childlike state. Mm. You got to grow up at some You've point. Got to grow up at some point. Take on responsibility. That's what to be God means. Because mm. a God is someone that is in control, mm -hmm. or that is taking on the responsibility. Mm. And you said about the mask is slipping off. What what it is is that when you when you rise to the top and you open the can of worms and you find out that you're the god that you're calling on because as i said before if you want something you have to go and get it mm. but the thing is when you tell somebody you're god or goddess in case of a female it's like okay what does that mean what does that mean that means now you have to take on the responsibility of healing the sick mm -hmm. providing the jobs make the miracles make so the miracles <laughs> Yeah, it's easy when you walk into something yeah, yeah, yeah. that someone else has already, Don't as their godliness uh -huh. built, uh -huh. and they're giving you a job mm -hmm. to keep you just over broke. Just over broke. That's yeah. a rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, if they can do it, you can do it. But now it means you have to work mm. because they tell you God worked, but they make it into like some some magic tricks. Like mm -hmm. God said, let there be like. And let there be this and let in reality nothing works like that mm -hmm. you have to plant a seed water it water it mm -hmm. nurture it the sun as well yep yeah, the elements mm -hmm. to make that become fruitful mm. 
but you people just want fast food they don't know how the the food was grown or how it even came to be mm -hmm. they just want to drive through and collect it eat it but there's no nutrition in that type of food because mm -hmm. there's no love and no care and in, mm -hmm. into that food it's just conveyor belt food yeah absolutely it's um it's the convenience they they've swapped the the, the process that you're mentioning yeah. for the convenience and their time and just seeking for something else to drive their attention towards. Yes. Yeah. So it's easier to hand it all over to Jesus. Absolutely. Take, Jesus take the will. Yeah. He, <laughs> Jesus is going to, or, or Allah, you know, everyone say, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, everything is just leave it to Allah. Yeah. But you, you're Allah, you're God, you're Jesus, you're all of that because the whole point was to teach you how to become the fisherman. Mm. You see, so it, when you become God in that sense, you have to become responsible mm -hmm. for everybody and everything. Mm. And people don't want to do that because it means work. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this perhaps would explain why in our community we, we get so hooked up on the idea of being children forever. Mm. Um, and I think this is something that's exploited uh, against us mm. uh, because, you know, as you mentioned at the very start of this conversation, facts are the facts mm. and we can't shake them. We can't, you know, our I feel likes will not move yeah. them. Yeah. And the facts are uh, every other community has managed to benefit of our hard work mm. throughout all of these centuries. Yes. You know, so this is not a matter of complaining, but it's a matter of understanding how to plant the right seeds so that we actually grow mm. and stop to perpetuate these bad cycles. Yeah. These cycles where you go to work your whole life until you're 63 mm. to build someone else's company. Mm. And, you know, and for you to just, just about get about, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, so one must graduate to the stage where responsibility has now a new angle to mm. it. You know, you're not, you know, you're not dreading your responsibilities. You, you take them on yeah. with happiness and joy yeah. and you do what you must. For yourself, you're right, people. you're so right yeah. because you've been taught to take the easy road, mm. yeah. But as you say, um, you go through stages, you know, you could be in nursery, then you go to primary school, secondary school, then you might go into college and to university, and you know, you can continue learning. Mm. And if you're in the state of remaining a baby, mm -hmm. you always want to be fed, you do spoon fed, mm -hmm. you know. So, like you say, you're not going to graduate to the point of relying on somebody else mm. and one of the sayings that um our teacher dr malachi z york uses he says that the helping hand that you're looking for is at the end of your arm hmm. yeah so you have to that, that responsibility comes in you have to you ha and now people are doing it there are lots of people becoming you know millionaires the internet and the uh, current technologies are allowing people to be able to it's opened up now like people can make money from their mobile phones mm -hmm. you know there's many skills and things that you have to evolve to because of the new world we're moving to, mm. where you know it is it is possible now to run a business and do things from just your mobile phone. Absolutely, you know. And, so and many young people and older ones as well are in that conversation now. Yeah. So the the times when you go to university and you come out and there's a job waiting for you for life, those days are over. Yeah. And and the thing is that now you're coming out with debts mm -hmm. because you have to get loans to even go to university and you know the knowledge that you can get on the internet and just get from you just sitting at home with a computer mm -hmm. you can do so many things absolutely um but but like you said before it, it just goes back to this thing of are you going to get up and do for yourself and ironically what people call wealth um in the west it's all built on things from Africa anyway, mm -hmm. which will be the resources mm -hmm. where God, Allah, whatever creator you want to use, put all that resource in Africa, the gold, the platinum, the oil, the silver, uranium. the uranium, the cobalt. Mm -hmm. And this is what the West are using to be flourishing and, and making themselves look wealthy. But Absolutely. yet you've got it under your feet as a Melanite, as an African, mm -hmm. but we just don't know how to grow up, mm. organize, mm -hmm. and make use of those resources. Mm. And this is where it's got to be. Africa is the next frontier. Absolutely. Chinese are in Africa. Everybody's going to Africa, yeah. you know, because they realize it's the new economy. 
It really is. Yeah, it's growing. And so, yeah, we, we are getting to a point where people are starting to realise that they've got to take responsibility. Come, come out with inventions, come out with new things and, and um, yeah, produce instead of being consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I think um, what we can definitely work from mm. is an understanding of taking responsibility upon yourself mm. and acting uh, as if you know that you have to do why you have to do what what you what you should be doing mm. for that responsibility to turn into something yeah so um so it starts what with are you. some examples of perhaps authors mm. or um intellects that we as melanated people yeah can rely upon because mm. the reason i'm asking that in particular is because i've noticed that in every community as was mentioned earlier yeah there's intelligence at the service of that community. Mm. So, you know, earlier we, sp we spoke about the slave master and uh, what the slave master was built. Mm. There's intelligence for the slave master at the service of the people mm. underneath that kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we mentioned Chinese being in Africa. There's Chinese intelligence at mm. the service of Chinese development. Mm. You know, India has also developed a lot over the last hundred years, regardless mm. of their complex conversation yeah so it's a bit of a complex conversation but they've developed because they mm. have intelligence at the service yeah of their development so for melanated individuals mm. that perhaps have got those questions how do we now enter a conversation of melanated intelligence at the service mm. of melanated people it's a good question it's because a lot of melanated beings have been taught to rely on somebody else mm. and it's become something that they find hard to deal with mainly be, like to withdraw from mm. mainly because of fear mm. but the thing is that necessity is normally the most encouraging force meaning that if if for example you were put in a position where you had nothing else you would have to find a way you would have to, to yeah. survive you would have to yeah so it's about working with like-minded people mm. because sometimes on your own this is why Wu Sabat is based on the community it's based on us working together coming together because it, it's it can be quite hard and daunting for you to set out on your own mm -hmm. if you want to say start a business mm -hmm. because again the powers that be have it that they don't really support you in terms of getting bank loans and certain things Mm -hmm. um, so we here, we have an African cultural centre. It's a hub where people can come, all types of people from all walks of life. But because it's predominantly based on an African culture, you can relate to it. Mm -hmm. And then you can work together with other people so that we can build because we're, we are entrepreneurial. Um, yes, we teach knowledge of self mm -hmm. because ultimately you have to start with yourself first. Let's go. It has to start with you. There's no other ways. Yeah. Um, and so we have a lot of books that get your brain, like you were saying about authors. Um, Dr. Malachi Z. York is one of the best authors out there with a lot of books. But we've got books from everyone and all types of writers here and authors. So mm. you have to, we say education, but we really mean acquiring knowledge. Because mm -hmm. education is edited diction, mm -hmm. meaning that when you go to school, there's a, a curriculum, there's a particular, you know, way that they teach you and ultimately, ultimately to come out and be a slave and work for the slave master. Mm -hmm. Rock, so, so, not to cut you, Rockefeller. Yes. He wants workers, not thinkers. That's right. Exactly. Whereas if you're a thinker, you basically want to acquire knowledge and skills that you can... Because back in the days, it was all about being an apprentice because you're learning a trade. And that trade was something that it may be running through the family, you know. And, you know, so you might have a family that were, I don't know, carpenters. And then you become a carpenter. A carpenter and you have Family pride, family name. Exactly. And mm -hmm. then there's a legacy and so mm -hmm. on. So it's really about you taking that responsibility to say, I want to be amongst people who can support me. Because support is also very important. Mm -hmm. Um and that's, that's how we have to do it as a community and then build um, whatever, whatever we need, you know. Mm. Um, 
You can't complain about the schools and then don't have your own school. Absolutely. You can't complain about the hospitals. The health. Mm -hmm. The health. And not supply. And don't have healers and people that Absolutely. can... Absolutely. You, you have to have the things uh -huh. that you complain about. Become the person you once upon a time needed. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyone that is listening to this or that wants to work with like-minded people, that's what we are here for. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's, it's like we say, Wu Sabat transcends the the divisions the competitions um the you know religions and all it's about can we work together to build and provide things for our future mm -hmm. for our children for the elders for the you know the community mm -hmm. because it's possible it is it's just the mindset has to be right mm -hmm. you have to have the right mental attitude to know that you're thinking or reasoning mm -hmm. yeah because as you know thinking is another thing that people don't understand the dynamics that you think you're thinking. I know that sounds crazy. No, 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 keep going. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, a... like when you're dealing with a lot of the, pro <laughs> the programming, yeah? yeah? When you wake up, your senses are constantly being bombarded with advertisements, with mm. radio, with TV, with social media, with Incredible. celebrities, with hmm. people that are telling you this is the way to live or how you should be. Mm. So you, 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 you might watch something that, you know, a favorite artist does, and, and you think that's what you should do. Mm. So you start to see this consensus where everyone will walk around with their, their trousers dropping down or Which a really particular is, is representative stereotype. of something else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to look at these things and behaviors of what people are doing, mm. we all go to church and we do the same thing every week, every week for months, for years, but there's no change. There's no outcome there's no that is different. So it's like, that's dead. Anything, it's, it's anything, <laughs> anything that is not changing, it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. Because a, a dead person doesn't need to change their clothes. They don't. They're so dead. you see, so if you're alive, you realize there's always constant. There's change. always change. Absolutely. And you have to change with it and mm. work with those who are changing with the times. Mm. Yeah. Because if not, you're you're left back in the dark ages, as they will say. Quite literally. Yeah. And. Uh, there's, um, there's an apparent quality of life difference mm. between individuals who practice the dead way of living mm. and the live way mm. of living. Yeah. You know, uh, we understand that perhaps what has been an obstacle yeah. is the full comprehension of language. Mm. You see, you and I, we had a very fluid conversation today. Yeah. Where we're lucky enough to be articulate mm. and the thoughts in our minds we can put them together and bring them out. Yeah. Um, how could you break down the importance of etymology mm. to our audience? Because I've yeah. noticed, before you answer, mm. I've noticed that you break down a lot of terms such as education, belief, television, yeah. and things there. Yeah. So how can we bring to the forefront the comprehension of etymology yeah. to our audience? That's a million dollar question. And one which sets us apart mm -hmm. from everyone else mm. because we we always say we've got our own language mm. and people think they they may try and trivialize that but that's a a very it's it's a, such an accomplishment because it breaks down the programming because words it's what you're saying you're manifesting mm. yeah because you may not realize it but you're constantly programming yourself by what you're thinking even though you may not hear it aloud, you're hearing it in your head. Mm -hmm. So when we say words are so powerful, it's because that's how you break the spell. Mm. Because the spell is used to, um, spellings are what are used to cast the spell. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, that whole thing of words you're using, and you, you, know, you say things like, like we say, God, heaven, hell, um, Jesus, Muhammad, all these things you're saying, especially if you're looking at them like a power source, when you start to break the words down, you realize that it means something else. So even in the legal world, mm. they'll have legalese, which is a completely different language. In the medical field, they'll have medical language. So even words like, do you understand? Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, 
someone might think that's insignificant. It means, do I get it? No, they're telling you, do you stand under, under the statement? Absolutely. See, they've got a reaction now. Yeah. <laughs> All the authorities. <laughs> yeah. They always say that. Yeah. So the, the, the police might say, do you understand? understand. Your boss at work, do you do understand? You understand? It's, it's like you, you, they, they're placing you under yeah. what they've just said. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You turn around and say, no, I don't. I overstand. I overstand. Let's go. I'm over that. <laughs> yeah, I'm over that. You know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, th this one's smart. And mm. we then start to do the tug of war. But yeah, you're right. So when we say we have our own language, I can say something. And you have to ask me what that means. Mm -hmm. Whereas every other person is under the subject of the language that they're speaking. So even though we're conversing and like you say, we're articulate and we're communicating, um, it's still based on what people call English. Mm -hmm. But it, English is not even a language itself, even though that might sound crazy because it's, uh, it's really a dialect composed of words from other languages, mm -hmm. you know, like German, like French, like Yiddish, Latin, Latin, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So yes, you've hit the nail on the head that learning your, our language, mm -hmm. which when I say ours, it was the first language on the planet. So it's mm -hmm. ours, you know, but it's just that people didn't realize that these extraterrestrials, these beings that are passing themselves off as gods, which on my last video with um, Cam, I was like, they're frauds because mm -hmm. that fear is taken away when, when you know who you're talking about. Mm. But when you don't know, it's, it's camouflage yeah, under this, this cloak of fear me, sacrifice to me. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I'm going to burn you up. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are afraid of them. But when you take the cloak off and like, you're just like me. You're just like me. You're walking, you're talking, you're Very making good. mistakes, you're having wars, you're fighting. Mm -hmm. You're raping, you're killing, you're doing all kinds of stuff that are human in nature. Mm. But yeah, I'm supposed to respect you, like... Pedestalize you, even. Yeah, mm. even, you know. And so, yeah, when you break down the words, you start to see clearly, mm. like, Genesis. Mm -hmm. that, that's not the beginning. That's not the beginning. But if you think that's the beginning, you're thinking that was the beginning of everything. So then you cut off everything that was before that extra data you should be in possession of. You cut it all off. You cut it all off. Mm -hmm. So then you don't want to link to your ancestors. Mm. You don't, you want to now give your energy and everything to this deity. Mm -hmm. So you're really giving your powers to them, I suppose. Submission. Yeah, to yourself. Mm. And, and funnily in Islam they say, you know, Muslim means one who submits. Like submit to who? Mm. Why do I need to submit? Mm -hmm. Why is it that every Muslim's name is Abdullah? That's, that's a name that every Muslim gets before they get their other names, yeah? Abdullah means slave of Allah. Hmm. And it's actually the name of Muhammad's father. Hmm. So when you start to go into these religions and, and it's deep because it's like, and then, and then Muslims, or, sorry, not even just Muslims, like when you say you're a slave, that means you're really giving your power to somebody else. You have, yeah, absolutely. So, and, and so that we can clarify also the yeah. relationship of slavery occurs the moment there's a master and a slave. Yep. It doesn't just have to be to a deity That's or right. to, uh, 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 let's say, something that goes beyond human computation. Mm. You could be a slave to food. You there you go. You could be a slave to your desires. Uh, absolutely. You could be a slave to fashion. Yep. You could be a slave to whatever it is mm. that is basically the master of your decision making. You could be a slave to smoking cigarettes. You could be a slave People to say, I'm going to go out and have a fag or I'm going to go out and have a cigarette. I'm like, the cigarette's having you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like... <laughs> You, you think you're having it, but it's, it's, consu you. it's consuming it's you because you. if you then get lung cancer or whatever, 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 and that could be any vice, as you said, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because you have to look at who's benefiting because ultimately someone gains and somebody loses. How capitalism works. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see. So, yeah, yeah, it's deep what you're saying. So this was um, a bit of clarification over etymology, mm. um, you know, as a... As an artist, yeah. when, when I'm not an entrepreneur, I rap, yeah. you know, um, as well as production. But I think most people know me for rap music. Okay. Um, lyrics uh, became a tool of expression mm. and they became so much more effective 
when I understood vocabulary, mm. when I understood the the origin of words, mm. you know, hence I mentioned about etymology. Yeah. Uh, and when I understood um, that by putting the right words together, let alone the the, the prophetic nature of mm. the lyricism, you know, where my eyes open to how my lyrics were manifesting my life, mm. right? And obviously, yeah. it's one of them where if I told that, obviously, yeah. we're well, we an interview now, yeah. but if I had this conversation with someone, like, I kind of wrapped my life into existence. Right. They, look at, they look at me like I'm crazy, right? Mm. <laughs> but it's like... But you did. I did. It's called alchemy. <laughs> Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And over the years, I then started to ask myself the questions. Okay, mm. how was that scientific process actually occurring? Right. And this is when I, I noticed that, indeed, the words hold... Power. Power. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, Even uh, when we said, you said etymology, that's a mm. big word to some people. Mm -hmm. like, what, what's that mean? What's yeah. that about? Yeah. Um, so you have to kind of break that down. But mm. it, it's important for, for people to know because this is why people get lost because big words, mm. you know. So sometimes I like to make things, that's why I give simple examples, the things that people can relate to. Mm. Um, because like you say, etymology is about the origin of words and how they have evolved and, you know, what power those words hold mm. and, and what relates to it. Like, for example, you might say, like I said, six. Mm. Um, if you study languages, you start to know that, you know, like the vowels, because I used to watch Countdown. Mm. It was a show that used to come on TV. You know, give me a consonant, give me a vowel, give me, and you put word, they put a lot of these consonants and vowels together and then they hit a time buzz, and, and people have to make the yeah, longest yeah. word from that. Mm -hmm. That's helping you to train your, your brain, brain absolutely, and your mind to, to work out, you know. So what it is, is that you have to start off with letters that form the words. But like you say, in terms of rapping, mm -hmm. even Kanye West said this, when he was rapping negativity, like, more they created, more. yeah, gangster rap and all this negativity. It creates more and more of that mm -hmm. to the point where people would then go out and live that life. Mm -hmm. And some of these rappers were faking it because mm -hmm. that life was not even really their life. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you have some people who, what they rap is not their reality. Mm -hmm. It's where, just a business tool. Exactly. So when you switch it up, like he said, Kanye West, when he, started, if he wrote a, a lyrics about, Jesus, like Jesus walks or whatever, mm -hmm. it didn't get the same reaction. attention and reaction. But if he wrote the slackness, it did. Mm -hmm. And that shows you that the people that control the industry that are thinking about money. The readies. Yeah, it's a program. It's like this sells, sex sells. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, when you look at how languages are put together, like I said, you could swap an I with an E in terms of the vowels mm -hmm. and six becomes sex. Mm. And sex is a very powerful force. Mm -hmm. And sex is used to control a lot of people and a lot of the world because it's all about emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so etymology is actually really important. That's why I said when we speak our language, it's a tone, mm -hmm. it's a vibration, mm -hmm. it's a frequency. Mm -hmm. And frequencies is what you can utilize to bring about any outcome. Mm -hmm. You can use frequency to heal anyone. Mm -hmm. You can use, and when you're talking, you're speaking frequency. You are. And like you said, it's the way you then put it to the music, the mm -hmm. articulation, and, and that's what rap was about. Rap was really a gift to us by our elders mm. to help us send the message out quickly. Brilliantly. Brilliant. But what ends up happening, it, it got hijacked. It got hijacked. An, and exter then, an external flipped. hand. Yes. Absolutely. And then it became rapping about slackness and money and material things and how many people you kill and all that kind of it's stuff. A, a distortion of a gift. Yeah. You know, I'm a 90s baby. Yeah. Right? So I had many conversations with people born in the 90s uh, and to an extent people born in the 80s. Yeah. And a lot of us during the, let's say the baby boom crisis, yeah. which led to this epidemic of single mums mm. all across right a lot of us in the 90s i mean that's a, perhaps a reality of the 2000 babies as well yeah but in terms of you know what we all related on um in the 90s a lot of us grew up at home just with our mums right mm. so we we we, we, we could still acknowledge that we were young boys you know 
conducting ourselves in a very boyish way. You might go football mm. or, you know what I mean, uh, boxing class or extracurricular activities after school. Yeah. But we still needed masculine guidance that mm. we, we required. We, we might get some of it from our uncles here and there. Mm. Um, or perhaps our dad might, you know, make an appearance occasionally. Yeah. But we've definitely found something profound and powerful in hip hop. Mm. You know, I, um, I grew up in, in France, in Paris. Yeah. Then I moved here when I was a teenager, late teenager, so like 13, going yeah. to 14. And I noticed the difference uh, and the similarities mm. in, in culture when it came to, let's say, urban culture. Yeah. Or um, basically the, the areas that have less financial flexibility mm. than the privileged parts of an economically thriving country. Yeah. So whether you're looking at England, France, Germany, Spain, all of these European powerhouse mm. that are developing but they've got you know towns in the suburbs where yeah. there's less opportunity for children mm. right um and obviously when you put those circumstances together there was a period where help hip-hop was healthy yeah for for youngsters mm. as um perhaps a, a, an imaginary father figure okay you know mm. um for obvious reasons that, that we kind of touched upon now External hands get involved in the picture mm. and um, hip hop becomes something else now. Mm. Uh, how do we have a healthier relationship with hip hop or mm. rap mm. as melanated beings today? Mm. Because it's, it's apparent that what's going on today is not healthy. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I mean, you'll have to probably expound on what you mean by hip hop being a father figure I, I mean I get the the social element because you're yeah. going to meet amongst peers and other people and you kind of give each other support um, but in terms of it being a father figure I think you might have to elaborate a little bit on that for me no problem um, I can do so but, but I do get what you mean about the absence of not having that masculine energy and guidance mm. um, and no matter how strong you know they push our melanated sisters to think you know, you don't need a man, um, you know, this women being strong and everything, but ultimately you need both sides because mm. a woman can only do what a woman can do mm -hmm. so far and a man can do what a man can, can do. do. That's and it. one is not better than the other, but ultimately they, one, they, they need together. to work together. Mm -hmm. So if you're living in a society and a system where it's by design to separate the families, then, you know, young boys are going to have that missing element. And this is, where, if, if, even with myself, to a certain degree where, um, you know, my father wasn't around. But the thing is that because I came across Wu Sabat and, you know, Dr. Malachi Z. York is a, a, a father figure. He's a, he's a brother, he's, you know, it's like an uncle, he's like everything to, to everyone in that regard. Um, you can get that from other people is what I'm saying in terms mm -hmm. of the, the the role models or the people that you look up to in society. Mm. Um, yeah, hip hop. See, even when I'm saying hip hop and then I'm saying rap, two different things. Mm, it's true. Yeah. I should have been more specific. Yeah, yeah. And, mm. I, and I'm saying like a lot of, it, it was more of a creative thing, a, a way of channeling the energy that you may not be able to express as a man through the lyrics. Mm. and you know having something to do but then money was introduced into it mm -hmm. so where it was something of expression creativity and outlet where you know you can express yourself when money was thrown into it then the industry changed because the people that were putting the money in they had an agenda and it was mm -hmm. like you need to look like this you need mm -hmm. to wear this you need to say this mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to sell mm -hmm. so yeah i feel like yeah, I feel like money being introduced into hip hop started to see the competition and the divisions and things like that. So I don't know about today, because today is like, I don't think many people can make money from hip hop unless they're doing their own streaming and things like that, because Absolutely. the music industry is completely different today than, than what it used to be. What it used to be, indeed. Yeah. Now, f thank you for at least trying to answer um, yeah. as close as you could with my lack of clarity perhaps yeah. in the question yeah but if you could. The, the aim the aim was to um to bring light upon 
the benefits that have come out of rap music. Mm. Um, this is perhaps what I tried to do with the personification of hip hop into a father figure mm. for a lot of boys that grew up in a single mother household. Mm. Because I noticed in terms what of- What would you say those benefits are that have come out of it? So I would say the consideration mm -hmm. of some of the clever anecdotes uh, the the art itself of rhyming, the mm. art itself of putting words together mm. uh, in a rhythmic way uh, and in a way that basically normalised genius mm. uh, within split seconds. Right, got you. Right? Mm. So I think to be exposed to such high mental activity mm. from a young age yeah. was a very positive activity for us to indulge in mm. because it, it, it really normalised an extremely complex process. You know, today I'm a freestyle rapper, mm. so out of any times I could come up with hours and hours. Yeah, of I got you. I got right? you. Yeah, because I've mastered the skill mm. that that is. You know, mm. you've, you've got to grab from what you perceive, yeah. formulate the ideas, and then make it rhyme and make it in yeah. rhythm to entertain as well as educate. Right. And there was a period where, due to the health that was found out of the creativity mm. found within the realm of hip hop and the realm of rap. It was beneficial mm. to a lot of youngsters. I got you. Right? Yeah. Prior to the corruption entering mm. the conversation. Right, got you. That's what I was saying, that yeah. initially it was showing that how smart you can be because mm -hmm. they looked at that, the powers that be, like, how are these young people able to articulate, put these words together in rhythm and everything? But like I said, it, it, its initial purpose was so you can communicate verbally mm -hmm that message to the world mm -hmm. and like you know it kind of got corrupted um but now you've exercised the fact that you can utilize your brain in that way now you need to channel that same smart or that intelligence into other areas whether it's business whether it's you know being an entrepreneur fashion whatever you can do the same thing so in that way i get what you're saying because it's all about your your intelligence which is really intel in your genes or your genetics, mm -hmm. going back to the etymology again. Mm -hmm. So you have that ability to do anything if you can accomplish that, mm -hmm. you see. So this is where we have to grow up to now, right? So you get people who at 40, 50 or whatever are still trying to be rap stars. Mm -hmm. No, like I'm not saying you haven't <laughs> got the skill, but you got to realise that time's over. That time's gone. Now use that same intellect for something else. For something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying don't have Same it as thing. a recreation, yeah, yeah, um, totally. something you do in your spare time as a hobby. Because I still write. I still write. I'm, I'm creative. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not trying to be a rap star or be like that because it's like, but the intelligence, as you say, that you can, if you can do that with your brain, mm. it shows you can do any, anything else you put your mind to as well. And that's what these young people have to learn. Yeah. That stop chasing the star, stop chasing that dream, mm. um, use that intelligence and channel it somewhere else. Because when you're in school, melanated children, young boys, etc., they push you to be an entertainer. Absolutely. A sports person. Sports person. You okay. know, because even though you have that intelligence, mm -hmm. you're better off being a footballer, you're mm -hmm. better off being, you know, something to do with entertainment, mm -hmm. and yet others are pushed to be scientists, to mm -hmm. be the people that come up with the Googles and... Absolutely. And, you know, the Facebooks I mean, and all of this stuff. If, if we're specifically looking in the realm of childhood, mm. there's a clear difference between the agenda pushed upon melanated children yeah. and perhaps Asian children. Mm. You know, Asian children are often known to be very smart kids. Mm. I've, I've rarely came across some Asian kids in my personal life. Yeah that were known to misbehave, mm. you know, and... But, but they don't face the same challenges as we do, as you say. They don't face the same challenges. As single parent uh -huh. and, you know, going through all kinds of traumas and all kinds of things. And even then, we still excel. And it's just have... that if you're not given the same opportunities mm. and you're not on a level playing field, mm -hmm. then it's like it would appear that way mm. because, you know, you're, you're in a two-parent family, you come from school, dinner's ready, mm. you know, you get maybe extra tuition and you, you stay out of trouble, you're, you know, you're not dealing with the same type of situations that environmental, we find, environmental situations that mm. we find ourselves in. 
Mm. So to be honest, and that doesn't even touch on the traumas of going back to like slavery and all the things, things that, yeah, that, you know, we remember is generational. Mm. So you're dealing with epigenetics as well. Mm. So even though you may not have gone through it, but if your grandma, great grandma went through it, it's, it's still in the gene, isn't it's it? still in the genes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a comprehension of a step by step. Um, journey and development yeah. for one to separate themselves from ideologies mm. that have not served humanity exactly. for a very long time. Yes. You know. So and this is all across the board. Mm -hmm. Now we're living in a day and time where everyone is just looking at things like has that, like you said, humanity because mm -hmm. humanity has to evolve mm -hmm. to a certain level where we um, we're now looking at how do we join the, say, galactical communities? Mm. How do we space travel? How do we go to the next frontier? How do we do things that, you know, are going to take humanity to a different level? Yeah, so we, Right, so we have to solve the problems like poverty, mm. you know, like diseases. Mm. Um, and this is happening now. This is where people are talking about AI and, you know, abundance in terms of, if everybody, let's just look at it, utopia. Everybody had food to eat. Mm. Everybody had money. Um, so what would you do then? If there's no, there's no diseases. Mm. Everything. What would you do then? No requirement to rob the next man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, because so what? Rude, what right? would you do though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you now focus your energy on solving problems of the world. Mm. You know, um, coming up with you know new inventions coming up with new things that will be beneficial to all of humanity. Mm. Not this divisions of, you know, because I'm black, because you're white, but, you know, I've got to have more than you. Mm. When you eradicate that, you mm. take control away from the people that utilize those mechanisms. To get richer. To control the masses mm -hmm. and only keep the wealth and everything within a small selection of people. Mm. And they are afraid of this. They are. The more people are waking up and they're like, you know what? we the people mm -hmm. we have the power mm. but that mindset of shifting and thinking you know you can do it is where yeah a lot this is what knowledge does and this is where we are like teaching um yeah just the woke folks but um the, yeah, i had another conversation recently where like i said the sister was like you can be awake and then fall into another trap so it's a continuous development you've got to yeah, be amongst I, think I stumbled across that actually. yeah um let's touch upon that one actually it's uh it's very interesting because when you take the conversation of being awake mm. aside yeah and you just look at classification mm. as a as an applic as something that's being applied in our day-to-day -day lives yeah so obviously you can be classified as a male as a female mm. uh, as someone that's retired as a current worker as a student yeah you know you can be classified on the color of your skin on your belief system so classification is found on our day in our day-to-day -day lives mm. and it um it buries or it, it carries with it the consequence of uh differentiation mm. between individuals yeah which then leads to almost judgment mm. whether it's uh, conscious or, or unconscious. unconscious yeah uh, and it is almost it, it happens simultaneously mm. so as you you realize that you're different from someone mm. in accordance to what you've been taught the norm should be yeah you then automatically out of programming begin to judge mm. Uh, and position yourself in accordance to the judgment which you've made of someone. Mm. So when you then enter the conversation of being awakened, or yeah. perhaps having received a set of information that has mm. set you free in comparison to what you were, mm. to what you once were, yeah. um, this is something that I've personally noticed to occur within the awakened community. Mm. Uh, um, a lack of acceptance yes. of people that aren't quite on that wavelength. Mm. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a danger because what people do is they forget their journey, where they've come from. And that even though you've progressed maybe to a further level than somebody else, you have to always remember that you came from there. Because sometimes people say to us, 
you say you've elevated past these books, the Bible, the Quran, and so forth. Why do you still quote them and why do you still use them? Mm. Because going back to your original question, you still got family members and people that are still in that Real. mindset or frame. Mm. So you can't then be all kind of like egotistical, judgmental and so forth. So you have to always remember to meet people where they are at and, and walk them slowly, slowly with you through it. Mm. So yeah, that's a very important point you're making that sometimes you know people do get ahead of themselves this is why i also broke down that you can have all the knowledge in the world but if you don't have common sense mm. empathy mm. um compassion love and care it's like you you just become somebody that has just got a lot of knowledge but you're not really it's like knowledge without Without action. Without action. To go back to the Bible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, so, so yeah, I do get that point. And it's mm -hmm. not for people to try and make other people feel less than, less than themselves, mm -hmm. put them down. And mm -hmm. this is what the Bible does, because it's like, if, if you question certain things, then you can be ridiculed. If you talk about certain things that someone may not know about, you know, we've talked about like extra um, extraterrestrial spacecrafts or certain conversations that are uncomfortable for some people, then they will put you down or judge you or say you're blaspheming or you're an infidel or you're this. Absolutely. And yeah. that's what religion does. It separates people, making people think that if you're in my gang, we're we okay and everyone else is damned. And With the like, United Boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone does that. And it's like, yeah. no. So Wu Sabat, I always have to bring it back to Wu Sabat because... Mm -hmm. I've done that journey to, to get to where I am now. So Wusaba is about, it is the solution in my eyes. Not the only solution, as in other people can have pieces of the puzzle, mm. but it's about bringing us together mm. to, you know, bring the best in you. Mm. And I bring the best in me mm -hmm. and we put it together. On this very table. And we, yeah. Let me forward. That's, <laughs> That's right. phenomenal. Bro. Yeah. Phenomenal. What so a... I like having these conversations oh, with... Honor different people, different perspectives, uh -huh. and we're able to build and, yeah, come to a common ground, you know, so that we can then move forward together. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Phenomenal chat today. Yeah. So to kind of summarise, um, yeah. so that we have a bit of structure to this wonderful conversation, the idea is that one acts upon curiosity, mm. one works with the resources which there are immediate in their environments, mm. Uh, and one works with like-minded individuals mm. in order to get to a place where they can act on the back of the answers they receive mm. from seeking that knowledge. Yes. Right? Yeah. Before, obviously, finding the, the point of references mm. where they could stand on facts as opposed to... I'm glad to, you said that, right? yes. Yeah. Ideologies yeah. that are kind of forced upon us. Yes, exactly. So it's like... If we can meet and just deal with facts, we're good. No, no one's gonna, you know, because what it is is when you come together to do anything, mm. sometimes the reason you don't achieve the success is because of the differences. Yeah. Because someone might be like, let, let's say for example, we're trying to work and get something done today. And someone who's say a Muslim, the time comes, they wanna go and pray. Mm -hmm. It's like, Five do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that could be at different times. Mm. Now. It's kind of going against the flow of everybody oh, else. Yeah, because we're all here, but you have to be there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same with Christians, Muslims, or whatever else. Mm. So it, that's why we say, let's put the differences away mm. and deal with what we can come the together and on, mm. which is going to always win. Yeah, you know, so that's, that's the basis of Wusabat. Wusabat is about, let's just put away our beliefs. You can have your belief, but let's deal with the facts. And let's achieve the common the commonality for everyone that's going to move us all forward to get to, to where we want to go. And that's a that's a process. And you know, I mean, it's like you have to always know you're constantly learning. Um, they're noisy up there. Isn't it? Mm. We're constantly learning and um, just keep keep going because everything that um, is alive constantly changing and evolving absolutely yeah the, the law of opulence actually states that uh, it's um, a book i've been stumbling across over the last 
two weeks. Mm. And he speaks about how the purpose of human life is to create more life. Mm. This, this is what we're here to. We're here to, you know, earlier in our conversation, we spoke about the path of the dead and the path that's alive. Mm. A path that's not bringing any results over all the generations. It's a dead path. Yeah. So the path of life is to produce more life. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now, phenomenal conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, bro. Honor. Pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Until the next one. Until the next like, one. I'm loving these conversations. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I just like building with different people. And yeah, mm. thank you for your, for your sharing and your input and everything. My absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thanks to OSM as well for having us. Always, and, always, uh, always. Sure we'll OSM is the new news station <laughs> right now. Tune into OSM if you want to get the uh, latest. Subscribe uh, as well. Yes, yeah, we need to make sure we get the subscribers as well. Yes. Yeah, so subscribe and share it on to your people then. Yeah. Each yeah. one, teach one. Come on. All right. Peace.